so we're on our way to my pain management doctor. Um, I haven't fully made the video telling y'all that um, I went to, I, I'm being referred to a pain management doctor, but I was referred to a pain management doctor. I've been like running really behind on my videos. But by the time y'all see this, I will have gotten fully caught up, so that really doesn't matter. Um, I didn't feel like getting dressed this morning. I'm still wearing my pajamas. Um, I basically got out of bed and went. I didn't even bother changing. Um, when we get there and I know more, I'm probably not gonna talk to you inside the building because um, I want him to take me seriously and for some reason I feel like if he sees me with the camera, he won't take me as seriously. So um, I'm not gonna be filming inside the building today, but um, we are going to pain management doctor and hopefully he will have some answers or um, maybe something that can help me deal with the pain. I do not want to have any type of opioids at this moment if I can possibly keep from doing that. Um, I know that they're probably going to talk about something like nerve blocks um, because we're thinking it's intercostal neuralgia but we're not too sure. It could be the intercostal neuralgia or it could be the costochondritis or you know there, I guess there's always some possibility it's not either one of those. But right now we're looking between those two things. So we're going to go see what this doctor has to say. Hopefully he has something to say and yeah I'll talk to y'all when I know more or when I'm home or whatever comes first. Bye. Hey I want to apologize. You can probably hear my laptop right now. I'm using it so that you can see me. Sorry about the lighting. Um, I'm back from my pain management doctor. It's been a few hours and I'm really, really out of it. We kind of went over a lot and there's some stuff that I don't remember that we went over. I've been writing down notes to remember um, my appointments because I've been realizing that when I get home I'm not always able to um, talk to y'all guys, I guess, right away. Big. A big reason why I do YouTube um, is to remember all this stuff because before I go to like an appointment, I don't remember my last appointment and I always I can always go watch the vlog back or something. But again, sorry for all the low energy. I've been in a lot of pain today, but this appointment went really freaking well. Um, if you remember my old, it's like an update video. I think it was why diagnosis takes so long, but I'm not positive about that. I will put the video up here. But um, I was talking about that I got into a doctor that I'm not going to be able to see until next year. But um, Dr. Tariq today told me that he was going to try to get me in sooner to see this person. And the amount of joy I feel from that is like out of this world um joy might not be the right word i'm just i guess thankful but like i'm happy i don't really know like i've waited to get into this person for like seven eight maybe months um but i've been looking for th th this guy forever did i know i was looking for specifically him no but um i'll put another video up here i can't remember the title but i'll find it for y'all of when I was first starting this like journey to find out if I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It started with um, me finding out about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I didn't even know what it was. I kind of stumbled across it on accident but um, I had been doing research in my symptoms and if you can hear people's cars I apologize. For a while I didn't bring it up with my doctors because I was like well there's no way I could have like a rare disease and part of me still doubts it, um, but a lot of signs are pointing to, a lot of signs are pointing to it being associated with that or maybe possibly being associated with at least some of the illness that are like associated with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I said that way too hard. A lot of it, a lot of my, um, things that are wrong with me seems to be pointing to that, um, and I, my primary care physician agreed with that and so did my rheumatologist and you know if you watched my old videos you'd know that I was trying to get into somebody but they didn't take my insurance all this bullshit um, and it was actually illegal for them to take me even if we did it out of pocket because I was like maybe we will do it that way but that didn't work either so it took me months and months and months and months and months and months and months of searching to find this doctor and then to find out that a pain management doctor that I didn't even think was going to touch him to the subject got me in to see him sooner. 
like I don't even know the feeling I'm just like ex like thankful to this guy because um he didn't it wasn't it wasn't like my other appointments at all um my first pain management doctor appointment I walked out crying in the middle of talking um in like the appointment have she had all these accusations and um was asking about my mental health and um I wasn't in a point where I could talk about things about stuff with her and I wasn't expecting like a therapy section session and that's what this lady was wanting and so I left um because she was treating me like a drug addict and like I was trying to get drugs to kill myself or something because she saw PTSD in my um what do you call it my chart anyway this appointment went really really well and I have a lot to go over and I'll explain to you why I talked to you about the ehlers demo syndrome in a minute because I don't remember if I explained that part or not yet so he thinks it he doesn't think it's intercostal neuralgia he actually thinks it um, is costochondritis and you know like my last appointment um, video with not the one with the wheelchair the other one uh, I'll put it up there again we were talking about how um, there's a possibility until we find out what's wrong with my stomach we can't um, really treat anything because I keep throwing up the medication. Like, I have so much medication that I'm supposed to be taking and I can't. Especially a bunch of vitamins. So the theory behind of why I can't take meds and eat very well is we're thinking gastroparesis, but again, I don't know. Um, everything is speculation. Um, and so, um, he agrees with my rheumatologist that I need to find a gastroenterologist, which is what I like to call a tummy doctor, because it's easier and I'm a child. But, um, so it's kind of like, well, at least it's not intercostal neuralgia, but like if it's costochondritis, then I might not be able to get any relief till fuck knows when. Since he's not a neurologist and he just normally treats intercostal neuralgia, he wants me to go to a neurologist to rule it out, um, just like what I was already planning to do. And so I'm seeing Dr. Matthews soon. Um, I've seen him before. He was the guy that diagnosed my polyneuropathy. And so I'll go see him and we'll find out um, what he says. Some stuff that he talked about else. Uh, why I brought in the Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and that doctor was because, because he thinks it's part of two different things. Costrochondritis and POTS. And depending on how long you've been around again, um, you'll know that I had a clinical diagnosis of POTS, but then they told me I was misdiagnosed with a tilt table test that wasn't done correctly. And I always felt cheated out of that diagnosis because I thought it really fit, and I still think it fits. It was already in the back of my mind that that tilt table test, you know, I knew it wasn't done right, and I still didn't know what was wrong with me, and so I kind of just put off put it off for a little bit and I was still working to get into a doctor but it wasn't as active as other things like my Tourette syndrome this guy thinks I need to and I've it's always kind of been in the back of my mind like you still don't know why you faint you kind of just like left it at it's not pots what are you gonna fucking do um and so um he's gonna be sending me this guy and he's gonna be doing a tilt table test like he was already gonna do and so I had already gotten the appointment because I got in touch with somebody online through like a, um, what do you call it? A support group um, that helps you find doctors for like Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and POTS because there are a lot of doctors that think they know how to test for it but they actually don't do it correctly and that was what my experience was. And so I wanted to make sure I found somebody that actually knew what they were talking about. And so I did and when um, I called them they are like, you're not going to be able to see them until next year. I think I was going to have to wait a full year to get into him, but it's been seven months and I'm seeing him next month in December. So um, I am, I don't know, I don't know how to feel. I'm like, wow, I didn't think it was going to happen this soon, um, but I'm ready for it because if this brings me answers, then like, holy shit, like we've been, this is the, this was the point of all of this. Um, I, uh, like, it, it's kind of, like, weird, because everything seems to be connected, and if it is connected, then, like, wow, even better answers, but, like, I don't know how to feel. I don't know how to feel, like, because when I went to him, I was expecting him to tell me, like, 
you can't get pain medication or if you can get pain or if I can get pain medication I wasn't going to be able to keep it down or um I wasn't expecting him to take me seriously a bunch of bunch of bunch of bunch of bunch of scenarios not the scenario that oh he's going to help me get into my cardiologist faster like I wasn't expecting that and I feel like I'm spazzing out right now and I kind of a little bit am but um yeah, this doc like people come go all the way people come all over the world to see this guy. And so um I really trust him to do this tilt table test. And so he wants to do a celiac test also, which is different from the celiac disease. Don't really know what it is. I'm sorry. I'm um he was talking about like a nerve block and I think it's a steroid and I've had some people tell me that if um I have Ehlers Stanley syndrome that steroids are like basically kryptonite so don't do it um and so I don't know um I feel I don't know how to feel I I guess I'm like excited but I'm like not excited to be like go to the doctor I'm excited for answers because I've been fighting for this like my whole life like I haven't told y'all my whole like um story to how I got to the point of totally making my channel and totally making the decision to like not listen to anybody in my life of telling me that hey maybe if they're not finding something maybe something's not wrong because a lot of people were gaslighting me and um you know getting referred to this guy and going sooner to look into pots because uh, my pain management doctor thinks that there's something wrong with like the nerve um that pots kind of fucks with which is like your Hold on. I should know this, but I f my brain is gone. Something with, like, a nerve that's related to, like, your autonomic nervous system. He thinks something is wrong with it. And he thinks that, um, he wants to find out if Dr. Solomon thinks I'm a candidate for this, like, nerve block thing. But what I know, from what I know of, of nerve blocks, um, they're very dangerous. And with my Tread Syndrome, I can't, um, promise to be still. And, like, paralysis is a risk and so I don't think I'm comfortable with the nerve block even if it wasn't a steroid and I and if, even if I didn't have EDS or if I did have EDS and I couldn't get a you know like whatever the scenario I don't feel like comfortable with my knowledge right now to get one maybe he might tell me something that I don't know about it I don't know but right now I just don't feel comfortable getting a, blo a nerve block going to this doctor that kind of means that I'm probably going to be looking and we're probably going to be doing genetic testing and we're probably going to be doing um, like a new tilt table test um, to even confirm the POTS again because yeah my neurologist thinks I mean yeah my pain management doctor thinks I have POTS because like everything symptom wise still points to that and it's always pointed to that and I told him how the test went and he's like yeah that, that's not how you're supposed to do it I'm having a hard time right now not gaslighting myself EDS and POTS are viewed as rare diseases, but with all the clinical diagnosis that have been going on recently, it's kind of looking like it's not as rare as it, we thought it was. And so that causes to me to like second guess myself a lot. I don't know what this guy is going to say. Maybe he'll agree with um, my pain manager doctor. I don't really know. But I do know that this appointment is going to be super uber long. Um, we're probably going to be there for four hours maybe five. It's something I need to look into and so we're gonna look into because that's where the um, symptoms are pointing but I am having a hard time not gaslighting myself because I'm like what if you're going to these people and these doctors are wrong you know because how many tests have they given me um, that we in my opinion like it wasn't a waste of money because it brought us to it brought us further into where we needed to be but it was a waste of money in the sense that we thought we were kind of hoping you'd give us answers and it didn't. And we're kind of at that same boat. Like, we're thinking it's POTS. And that POTS could also be associated with my chest pain. Because I am having pain a little bit lower than my ribs. And, you know, we were thinking it was referred pain. That's why intercostal neuralgia was brought into the whole mix. But he thinks, like, he walked, he watched me walk. And he's like, you look like you got POTS. And you look like you probably have EDS too. Like, I agree with that. Um, he says, I was like, I don't remember all the things he was saying, but I tend to walk on one side of my foot more than the other. 
and I don't really realize it because my feet don't feel things very well and if they do feel things it's just pain um, they kind of feel like the skin and the bones are being crushed every single time I walk it's very very painful and even like when I'm not walking sometimes I can't have the, my feet touch anything I have to like prop them up and let them dangle over something because of just how sensitive everything is it's very very painful I guess we'll see where this leads if this leads to something or if it doesn't but um as always remember you know your body better than anybody else please listen to it i need to listen to that today and thank you for staying alive i love you have a nice night bye